Now, the other way that you can do this is if I wanted to connect it to the second node is I can record the receive payment and make a deposit at this point in time. So let me just show you that. I can say, okay, let's go to the, let's do that again. This time I'm gonna do it for, this time I'm gonna do it for the $300. So I'll go first tab. We'll say, let's make another invoice, boom, invoice. And I'm gonna say customer four, five, customer number five. I don't know why I even need to make a new customer. I could just, but no, I just wanna, wanna make it all differentiated by customer. Makes perfect sense. Stop questioning my method, me. Stupid head trying to tell me how to do my thing. I forget this, what was the dollar amount again? The dollar amount was 300, 300. Okay, so this is gonna increase accounts receivable. The other side's gonna go to sales because it's an invoice and the sub ledger for customer five will also be reflecting that as well. So let's save that and close it. Let's go to the balance sheet just to double check it. So now we've got the accounts receivable went up customer number five, 300, boom. Other sides on the income statement. I got to refresh it if I want to see it, which I do. So I'm going to refresh it and go into customer number five. Uh, there is that one. There's the 300. Okay. Going back on over, then the sub ledger is impacted. And if I go into the first tab and look at my customers over here, I now have customer number five with an outstanding item. The next thing we would expect to happen is we receive the payment. So again, you could wait till it clears the bank and try to connect the bank feed to the invoice, but we're gonna record the receive payment and deposit it directly into the checking account with the receive payment thing this time, instead of using the clearing account. So I'm gonna say, let's do a receive payment. We got paid. We're gonna record it on our end. And I'm just gonna not put it into the, into the clearing account, but rather directly into the checking account. So now it's gonna go into the checking account with a receive payment form instead of a deposit form, but the transaction will go into the bank. That means when I check it to the deposits, it's just like I'm checking a normal deposit doing normal bank reconciliation stuff, right? Because I'm not actually gonna record a new transaction with the bank feeds now. It's just gonna verify that the transaction that I did record ties into what happened on the bank side. So that's just normal bank reconciliation stuff. So I'm gonna go back on over to the balance sheet and I'm gonna say, all right, now if I go into my checking, let's check out the checking. Then this one was for $300. I should have a sales uh, receipt. It should look a payment type of form. There it is, I think that's the one for 300. So if I go into that, there it is for customer number five and I scroll up to the top, the other side decreased the accounts receivable. So I go into the accounts receivable and we can see that uh, what happened. There we go. So that has decreased. So we've got the increases and decreases. This is what happens in accounts receivable. You should be able to tick and tie stuff off. It goes up and then it goes down invoice and then you get the payment. And then the other side is gonna go on to uh, if I look at my, my detail over here on the customer side of things for customer number five, now I've got the invoice and the payment. So if I look at the invoice, it has now been paid matching the payment. So that looks good.